yeah, good luck in even finding mine, Lara. Anyway, moving on. In my limited experience, Blind people have terrific spatial memory, remembering exactly where stuff is, which helps them to find their way around their homes and other familiar places. Of course, if you go to a brand new location, that all goes away and it's back to using hearing and touch and possibly guides to get about the place. Well, Frank Swain has been to Sussex University where researchers are working on some tech that can paint pictures with sound. A large space, beautiful architecture, one glimpse can pretty much tell me all I need to know about this place. I've never been to this building before, but I'm having no trouble navigating my way around it. For someone who's blind or partially sighted, it's not that easy, but we're here to see some tech that might change that. Meet Daniel. He's blind, and this is usually how he finds his way around. His hearing is his most important sense, and his cane his most trusted companion. I can't really touch the ground to see where the grass and the uh, pavement is, so it's really like the elongation of my fingers to detect the differences. If I had to find something, it would be a little bit of time. Um, but it, of course, if I carry along the wall, I can uh, sooner or later estimate the size of it. Today. Daniel is trying out some new tech that is being developed at the University of Sussex. The Microsoft Connect on his chest scans the room in 3D and the computer in his backpack turns that information into sound, which he listens to through these bone-conducting headphones, leaving his ears free to pick up on other sound cues. The height of an object sets its tone. Distant ones are quiet, while those nearby sound louder creating a three-dimensional soundscape of the environment. Daniel's challenge today is to locate the obstacles in the room. In a big space like this, it's no easy task. Well, something quite high, sort of maybe head height. Uh, there is something quite far away. If I'm coming closer, yeah, the volume is increasing, so it's quite close now. It's like about maybe one meter away. Oops. Ah, yeah, there was something in head height. Aha, uh -huh. there is like a balloon. Interesting. As he's doing so well, I thought I'd make it a little bit harder for him. So I want to play a little game with you, mm -hmm. and we'll see if you can tell what pose that I'm striking mm -hmm. uh, just using this device. So, at the moment, how would you say I look? You're standing still, more or less, but maybe your some leg or um, this arm is out a little bit. You're wider on this side. Pretty close, actually. I mean, I'm standing in a, track, in a straight line, and mm. I'll strike another pose for you, something a bit mm. grander. Something like this, maybe? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another one that might actually be you know, quite important on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Maybe something like this. Fantastic, I'm tying my shoelace. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I, I would go further down, but my backpack was <laughs> on the way. <laughs> the passionate research team behind the project tell me they have ambitions that go far beyond musical shapes. The other thing that we're doing is to um, try and figure out what colours uh, can be represented through sound. So we've figured out what uh, the sound of red should be, for instance, which is not a trivial problem. One of our end um, goals is to miniaturise this so it could be, in, for instance, a mobile phone that you would have in your lapel using the camera there. So uh, already we're seeing that you can get depth cameras on mobile phones that don't use the rather clunky long connect camera that we've been using so far. There must be something sort of in front of me, which I would probably bump into if I go. Yeah, and there it is. A smartphone version of this technology could really help visually impaired people like Daniel, giving them added confidence to explore the world around them. That was Frank Swain. Now, of course.